Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're going to learn all about the JavaScript scroll event. You know, sometimes it can be really useful to listen to scroll events in order to find out about a user's scroll bar position as they scroll up and down a web page, or even scroll within an element on the page. So then what are some of the use cases for listening to the scroll event? Well, here's an example from Pinterest.com, and you notice that as I scroll, and that scroll bar gets close to the bottom of the page, well, more and more images keep loading. So in this case, we can use the scroll event for infinite scrolling. How about triggering animations when the scroll bar gets to certain places in the viewport? Let's check out this example from superlist.com, and we'll start scrolling down, and notice how the animations play depending on our progress with the scroll bar. Or here's something you've probably seen many, many times. On pitchfork.com, if I scroll down a little bit, check out the very top of the viewport. And when I get here, you can see that the nav bar, which was previously hidden, has now become visible. So in a case like this, we could use the scroll event to toggle a class on the nav bar to hide and unhide it. I'll leave a link in the description and comments section below to a new scrolly telling course I released where you can actually learn how to create a lot of these scroll based animations. So how can we listen for this scroll event? Well, let me show you two ways that we can listen for it. So in order to listen to the scroll event, well, first of all, we're going to need to actually get a scroll bar on the page. And if you look here in the browser, you can see right now we don't have any scroll bar. So let's just make a P tag or a paragraph tag. And we'll use this Emmet shortcut in VS Code to get some lorem ipsum text. And we'll say lorem 8000 and hit tab. So now if we go back to the browser, we can see that we have all this text, which gives us a scroll bar. Here's the first way that we can listen to the scroll event. First of all, let's actually close this style.css file because we're not going to need it at this moment. And we'll just focus on app.js. So it's very common to listen for the scroll event on the window object, and this is because we often want to track the scrolling of the entire web page up and down. So to do that, in app.js, we'll use the window object. And on the window object, we have access to a property called onScroll. And what we want to do is we want to assign this to a function. Let's assign it to an arrow function. And let's just log out something to the console so we can see exactly when this scroll event is getting fired. So let's log out the code creative. And let's check it out in our browser's console. Pay attention to the console now as I start scrolling. And look at that, as I keep scrolling, you'll see that number increase. And what I want you to take notice of is that the scroll event is one of those events that fires a zillion times at a very high rate. So the scroll event is one of those event types, along with the resize event or the mouse move event and others, that can really be quite taxing if you're planning on doing some complicated or elaborate logic in the event handler's callback function. And there are different ways to improve the performance of these events. Some of these are debouncing and throttling. And I've actually covered debouncing here on the channel. Now, the second way I'd like to show you to listen for the scroll event is by using the add event listener method. So for that, instead of doing window.onscroll, we can do window.add event listener. And the first argument here is going to be the name of the event. In this case, it's going to be scroll. And the second argument is going to be our event handler callback function, which is the function that's going to run whenever the scroll event is fired. And just to show you it works, let's console.log out again, the code creative. And we'll comment out the first one. And now let's check it out. And if we scroll, we see again we get all these scroll events firing. Now just so you know, add event listener is a preferred way to listen for events because it gives us more capabilities than this first approach. And one thing I can point out is that Add Event Listener gives us the ability to do things like registering more than one event handler to the scroll event. So far, we've been looking at listening to the scroll event on the window object, but we can also listen for it on elements within the page. So I've created here a new example where I have a div with a class of container. And then within that div, I have a paragraph tag that says, I love guitars, which you know if you watch the channel that I'm a guitar player, and so I do love guitars. And this is what it looks like in the browser. Let me just show you what I'm doing for the CSS. So we have that container div. And notice that it has a width and a height of 500 pixels. But then that paragraph element within the container div has a height and a width of 1,000 pixels. And that's intentional, and that's because I want to get some scrolling in this container. And in order to get that scroll bar, or scroll bars, I should say, I use the overflow property and set it to auto. Now let's move into our app.js file. And what we can do is we'll first get hold of that container element. So we'll use document.querySelector, and we'll pass in that div with the container class. And then we'll call addEventListener, 
and we'll pass in the scroll event and then the event handler callback function. And whenever we're using add event listener, we have access to the event object itself. And we can call it whatever we want, but it's conventional to just use the letter E. And let's start out by logging out E to the console so we can take a look at the event object. So we'll go back to the browser and now I'm going to scroll inside of the container itself and we'll take a look at the console. And there we go, we can see a whole bunch of event objects are getting logged. Let's just examine one of them. And this event object tells us about the event that got fired. One of the properties, the target property, tells us the element that the event was fired on. And we can see it's the div with the class of container. Now one thing that we want to do often when we're listening for scroll events is that we want to find out how much we've scrolled, either vertically or horizontally, so that we can trigger something at a certain point. Something like an animation, or toggling the visibility of a navbar. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go back to VS Code. And since we now know that we have access to that target property on the event object, we can use it to find out the distance that we've scrolled from the top of this container by accessing a property on it called scroll top. And then we can log that out to the console. And that's going to show us the number of pixels that we've scrolled vertically in the container. So now if I go back and I start scrolling, watch the console. And you can see the further I scroll down, the more that pixel number increases. And if we want to see horizontally how much we've scrolled, well in that case we would use the scroll left property. Now what I want to do is I want to go back to that previous example where we looked at the scroll event on the window object. And let's again, let's say window, and we'll add an event listener. We'll listen for the scroll event. And here we'll just do console.log and say window.scrollTop. And let's save, and let's go to the browser now. Let's try scrolling down and look in the console and notice that we get undefined. So the interesting thing is that when we're dealing with the window object, we're no longer going to use scroll top or scroll left, but rather we're going to use scroll Y and scroll X. So let's do window.scroll Y. And now let's try the same thing. We'll start scrolling. And now you can see we're actually getting a numeric value in the console. By the way, if you're interested in going further with these topics and learning how to actually use them in your own projects, I have a new course available. In the course, we dive into a concept called scrolly telling. And if you haven't heard about scrolly telling, you're definitely going to want to check it out. You'll find the link down below in the description and the comments section. Now, if you haven't done so yet, also subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments down below what other topics you'd like to see covered. See you next time.